Hello friends, so today I'll be just giving as a part of training tutorials a very brief overview on low anion gap acidosis. The main reason I was doing this is in the recent uh, few, last few days, I asked some of my trainees about whether there is an entity called low anion gap. So I was fairly and terribly surprised that many of the faint ignorance. So I thought it is good that we have a good overview on this low anion gap acidosis. It is something which is a known entity and there are very few causes which causes low anion gap acidosis and we expect every trainee to know uh, what are the causes for this low anion gap acidosis so it's just as a part of training tutorials so just to recap so as we know the anion gap so just keep this picture in your mind so this will make your understanding a little bit easy as we it's only five minutes talk so it's not elaborate so as you see this is the anion gap okay, the red one so the sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate is anion gap so we know that so this minus this two so even in exams or anywhere, if they ask about this, use this, try to utilize this picture. It, conceptual understanding becomes easy. As you see, the low anion, when we call low anion gap, if it is less than or equal to 3 milli equivalents per liter. So anion gap, as I said, there are three definitions, sodium minus bicarbonate plus chloride. You can say that as a definition. Or you can calculate as measured cations and minus measured anions. So that is same as sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate or there is another definition because if you have to understand the causes of low anion gap there is unmeasured anions and unmeasured cations which are not measured in this particular definition that also is anion gap so anion gap is unmeasured anions minus unmeasured cations so it is important to know what are the unmeasured anions unmeasured anions one of the main unmeasured anion is albumin and one of the main unmeasured cations or calcium, magnesium, and lithium. So these, if there is abnormality of this albumin, or calcium, magnesium, or lithium, so obviously your anion gap also gets affected. That's all you need to. So unless you know this, you will find it difficult. So the causes of lower anion gap, so the, so the commonest cause is testing error. So there can be pre-analytical or analytical errors with regards to calibration and uh, measuring any of these variables. If there can be technical glitches that could have given you erroneous sodium level or bicarbonate and chloride. So as I said, so if you see this, there is this un unmeasured anions here and there is this unmeasured cation. So you have to keep this conceptual figure in your mind. It's a small component. And please understand, when there is an alteration in, in this unmeasured anions, and the predominantly I said albumin is the unmeasured anion, to maintain electrical neutrality in our body, your anion gap should be this square thing. So there has to be a balance. It cannot be like un unmeasured anions is low and this remains unequal. It cannot be. So something has to compensate. It is always the chloride that compensates for this unmeasured anion. So if the albumin, which is the predominant unmeasured anion, if it is low, so it is compensated by increasing the chloride. So that leads to low anion gap. So this is very important concept to understand. So your predominant unmeasured anion is albumin. If albumin is low, chloride increases to compensate for electrical neutrality. So that is the term you need to remember. So in hypoalbuminemia, you need to do the corrected anion gap. So this I asked in the exams, so obviously I asked one of my trainees, so they can ignore this again. So corrected anion gap is measured anion gap plus 2.5 into 4 minus measured albumin. So simple to remember, just remember 2.5 into 4 minus measured albumin. And uh, so we spoke about unmeasured anions which is low albumin so then you have to think of unmeasured cations so you have this unmeasured cations so if this cations become more like hyperkalemia okay so or hypermagnesemia or hyperkalemia so if this becomes more so that can also lead to low anion gap or lithium so if lithium increases so that also can lead to low anion gap so as you see the lithium if the lithium increases there is again compensatory increase in the chloride and that leads to low anion gap or so once you have ruled out these causes so the common cause is low albumin then the next step is you have to look for increased cations you have to look at calcium magnesium potassium if there is any abnormality if these two are all okay then you have to look at paraproteinemias because you know because i've done a previous video as you know paraproteinemias or hyperlipidemia causes pseudo hyponatremia so the concept is where sodium is not really low just the plasma component is more and the protein component so sodium is reflected as being low so because your sodium is reflected as being low 
because your sodium is low, sodium minus chloride plus the so anion gap will be low. So in paraproteinemia or hyperlipidemia, there will be pseudo hyponatremia, which leads to low anion gap. Or there can be reasons where chloride is overestimated, which can be again a technical sort of a fallacy that can occur. If there are other halide ions which are similar to chloride, where your uh, electrode identifies them as chloride. So like bromide or iodide, which has a similar sort of a composition where the electrode recognizes it as chloride and gives it as chloride. So that can be chloride overestimation. This may be little rare causes. Okay, so that, that's all you have causes of low anion gap. So look at unmeasured anions, low albumin, unmeasured cations, which is potassium, magnesium, or calcium being high, or it has to be sodium, which is fallaciously being shown as low in pseudo hyponatremia due to paraproteinemia or hyperlipidemia or chloride overestimation, which is a rarer cause. So the simple algorithm you can remember if you have a low anion gap is, if low anion gap is less than three, or less than or equal to 3 milliequivalents. first thing you have to do is repeat it. Because as I said, the commonest cause is technical error, error, pre-analytical or analytical error. And if it is normal, when you repeat and if it is normal, it is called as testing error. So if it is still low, then you check the albumin. And you do the corrected anion gap by doing that measured anion gap uh, and that using that formula. So correct the albumin and if anion gap is high, you correct the anion gap. If it is normal, it's okay. If it is high, look for high anion gap causes. And if after correction also, if anion gap is low, then you have to do measured cations, check whether calcium is high, magnesium is high, potassium is high, or if there is lithium toxicity. Because we had a recent case of lithium toxicity where the patient had low anion gap. So measure this. And if these are high, then obviously you have to treat these causes. You know, if hypercalcemia is there, you have to treat hypercalcemia, hyperkalemia. And we had recently lithium toxicity. We had to treat the lithium with whatever measures. And even if these are normal, then you have to look for immunoglobulins. You have to do protein electrophoresis. Look for serum electrophoresis. Look for cholesterol levels. And rule out pseudohyponatremia due to paraproteinemia, which can come to ICU. Many paraproteinemias, multiple myelomas, or Waldenstrom's macroglobulin may be picked up in ICU. So if it is still high, uh, if immunoglobulins is high, then you have to evaluate for paraproteinemias. And even if they are normal, then you assess for chloride overestimation or sodium underestimation. So the last rare cause would be chloride overestimation. Otherwise, the common one is common one is testing error, followed by hypoalbuminemia, followed by either increased cations, followed by paraproteinemias or hyperlipidemia, and then assess, assess chloride overestimation. So this is the flow chart that you can keep in mind and utilize it to decipher as to the causes of low anion So I hope this video makes it very clear for all our trainees, the causes of low anion gap. And uh, yes, generally in exams, we will ask you to do the corrected anion gap. So please remember that simple formula. And uh, then you just remember this algorithm and just remember that pictorial representation of how the cations and anions are distributed. It will just make your conceptual understanding easy. So I request all of you to submit your valuable work to Journal of Acute Care. You can visit my website to be here to this lecture. So thank you. Thank you, Melendonis.